Okay, happy Tuesday, everybody. It is time for our weekly Ask Me Anything from the Woodlands Plastic Surgery. I am Dr. Correa. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, got a couple questions this week. Um, somebody asked about the uh, hip dip treatment uh, with Sculptra. Um, first of all, what is a hip dip? So hip dip refers to the concavity you can get along the outer buttock. So if you're looking at somebody straight on, you have that kind of hourglass shape formed from the chest to the waistline to the hip and then into the buttock. Um, t like everything else, to a certain point, it's a normal anatomic aspect. It's basically where the, the thigh bone meets the pelvis and there's kind of a lack of fat and muscle in that area they can, they can curve in. Um, like everything else on the human body, as we age, things we don't like get exaggerated um, and can deepen or um, age or descend or transform in a way that we don't like. And so when it crosses that line where it stops being just a normal attractive aspect of a, of a female body um, into something where it becomes something more distracting or something that wasn't there before and now it's there now, we call that a hip dip. Um, so traditionally the ways that we would treat that would be with fat grafting um, it's kind of a component of a traditional bbl or brazilian butt lift procedure and so what you would need to do is do more or less full body liposuction um, process that fat re-inject it into the lateral buttock which is the hip dip and then the rest of the buttock if you want to actually do a buttock augmentation or just shape the buttock area um, <clears throat> Basically, a newer treatment that's being used for this is Sculptra, and that's what the question was about, is can I use Sculptra for this or how does it work? So Sculptra is a fantastic option for somebody who is already skinny. Um, you basically have no fat to liposuction and inject into the buttock. And of course, everyone right now is saying, oh, I've got plenty of fat. I promise you probably don't have enough. Um, so there's not as much fat as you think there is. And put another way, it takes way more fat than you'd ever guess to actually get that really dramatic, um, very powerful Brazilian butt lift result that you see on all the, you know, all the promoted before and afters and um, all those really profound results from people who have, who have ample donor sites to get that really wow result. Um, and so Sculptra is an excellent option for somebody who is thin um, and doesn't have a lot of donor sites um, and uh, the reason why is it's Sculptra, so let me back up for a second. What is Sculptra? Sculptra is basically a filler we've been using in the face for years. Um, it's a very unique product. It's a very powerful product. Um, uh, the reasons why are that it is a unique molecule. It's not hyaluronic acid. It's actually PLLA or poly -L lactic acid. Um, it's similar to um, what we use in uh, stitches or sutures during surgery. It's basically a... a you know, kind of micro shaved product of that is these tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic spheres of that product or that molecule um, that basically you can inject. It's, a, it's so ground up effectively and then suspended that it's a liquid you can inject. Um, and then the body dissolves and heals around that. It stimulates collagen production. Um, ultimately, it is a volumizer, meaning it builds volume where we want volume. And so uh, in the face, we've used it primarily as a replacement for filler, more so in cheeks, jawline, rest of the face. It's not something you'd want to put in your lips. It's not something you'd want to put in your lower eyelids. Um, but for volumizing the face in general, outside of those more delicate areas, it's an excellent product to volumize the face. And the other aspect of Sculptra that is unique and generally a good thing when judiciously used is that it lasts a long time, um, lasts two to five years. Um, and so, uh, in the face, it's a product I use very ju judiciously because lasting for two to five years can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you love it, then it's a great thing. If you're dissatisfied with your result or it's not exactly what you're expecting, then it's a bad thing because you're stuck with it for two to five years. Um, and so on the face side of things, I generally start off with a temporary filler like a hyaluronic acid to make sure we get the result that we want. Um, understanding that that's going to go away in six to 12 months, 18 months, two years, depending on the area. And then if somebody's happy with that, likes it, and uh, is interested in going through the process of Sculptra, then we introduce Sculptra and that product lasts for, like I said, two to five years. Um, so going back to the hip dip um, buttock aspect. So, um, you know, disclaimer, it's not FDA approved at this point in time as an indication for injecting in that area. So it would consider be considered to be an off-label usage. 
Um, however, um, many products are used off-label. Um, Botox up until a few years ago was only approved for this area, but we were injecting in all multiple areas of the face. Um, and so it's, it's more about just judicious, educated, well-informed usage of the product and, and done in a safe and conservative manner. Um, and so plenty of products are used in off-label fashion. It doesn't mean it can't be done safely. It just means that they haven't done the formal studies yet to get that approval process. There's no reason to think that you can inject the same product in the face and then not inject it into the buttock, right? So, um, so anyway, it can be injected into the buttock and it works the exact same way. Um, you inject the product. The technique is different. You know, the, the technique is very different. The dilution is different. The technical sides of, of your treating provider, you want to go to somebody who knows what they're doing, has experience, has done it before, um, has training. Um, because the, the technique is extremely different injecting the, the buttock and the hip dip than it is injecting the face. Um, that being said, um, it can be done safely and it's very effective. Um, same thing, it should last two to five years, um, which is um, which makes it better, obviously. You know, you want it to last a long time if you're gonna go through that. Um, it is a serial treatment session um, approach, though. So you have to do multiple treatments over time, typically three treatments. Um, it's somewhat patient dependent, but generally we'll do a, you know, treatment number one, wait four to six weeks, do treatment number two, and either wait four to six weeks or wait up to six months, um, because the product builds slowly over time. It's not, um, an immediate result thing where the second you get it, you've got your result because the body needs to respond to that product that you've injected. And then it needs to build that collagen, which actually takes time. So, um, that's why we space it out. And that's why we might wait the six months is because if we're, at, if we're at that position where things are looking pretty good and either maybe we're not sure, we, we don't want to overdo it, or maybe there's budgetary constraints or whatever it is, that's where you might say, hey, why don't we just give this six months, see what we can get out of it just by your body fully reacting to the product and then evaluate it six months, see if that last treatment session is really necessary or maybe you get away with fewer, fewer um, vials that time around. Um, um, rather than what you thought you might have needed. And so that's the advantage of waiting. Um, the other major difference between injecting Sculptra in the body and buttock specifically area as opposed to the face is that obviously it's a larger surface area and the concavity in the buttock is generally deeper than anything that would be on the face just because it's a larger anatomic structure and so it requires a lot more product. Um, and so if you've, if you've had treatment with Sculptra in the face or you know people who have, or if you call an office and just say, hey, how much for Sculptra? Generally, you're getting the quote for the face and it, and it is more expensive for the face. Um, because we use so much, such a higher volume um, and it's such a different technique, the pricing is different on a vial per vial basis. It's actually cheaper um, on a vial per vial basis, but because you use more of the product, it still you know, ends up, ends up obviously um, being an investment on your part in terms of the, the financial side of things. Um, but it's, it's definitely one of the latest innovations in body contouring. It definitely fulfills a need because there are plenty of patients. And, and this problem, this hip dip problem is more common in slender patients. Um, patients who are more slender, who hit age 40 or have hormonal changes or have had babies, um, they're the ones who are more likely to get that in a really noticeable fashion where everything else looks pretty good. Hey, I'm doing my exercise. I'm at a healthy weight. I don't need to lose more weight. Um, this is just me. How do I fix that? And it's like, well, you know, we don't have any fat to liposuction because you're already at a healthy weight. Well, now we can take this off the shelf product and do it that way. So um, kind of an extended answer, but there's a lot in there to kind of unpack. So hopefully it's helpful. Um, let's see. So what else do we have on here? Um, we've got about five minutes left. Um, there's a question about lower eyelid filler. That should be quick-ish. So lower eyelids, um, so what do we mean by that? There's two, well, three really common complaints for the lower eyelid. Um, one is the tear trough, which is that shadow where the cheek meets the eyelid. Um, second common complaint is wrinkles or fine lines. Third common complaint is bags, um, where there's actually fullness of the, of the lower eyelid that's in there. I guess a fourth complaint would be discoloration if you have dark circles under your eyes. Um, filler can be used to kind of fill in that tear trough area. It's not really a treatment for fine lines. Um, for fine lines of the eyes, it's really just skincare that is going to be the, the mainstay of that. If you have deep wrinkles or a lot of wrinkles or a lot of extra skin, then we start talking about surgery and start talking about doing a lower blepharoplasty or lower eyelid lift 
um, to correct that. Um, same thing with uh, lower eyelid bags or fullness under the eyelid where it's actual fat that's coming out. If you have issues with that, that's more of a surgical problem. Um, mild cases can be successfully camouflaged um, with a filler. So you can kind of fill in the area beneath the lower eyelid bag. And in that fashion, you can camouflage that so it's less noticeable. Um, but again, there are limitations because you you know the eyelid is such a delicate, thin skin. There's only so much you can inject and still have a nice result that looks natural. Um, and so you just, again, you need to be in good hands, have somebody who's got experience, has uh, can judiciously deliver the, the product and do it in a way that's gonna be effective and safe. Um, and you know, I'd be remiss not to mention in a discussion of lower eyelid filler that, that it's super important that you're with um, ideally a board certified plastic surgeon or at least a certified nurse injector, um, somebody who has some sort of licensing and training behind their name. The lower eyelid is one of those areas and it's another example of an off-label use of a product. Um, but the risks injecting the lower eyelid are a little bit higher on both the, the kind of mild risks like having a bad result that you don't like or having skin issues all the way to more severe results um, that can happen from intravascular injection and things like that. Um, and so you want to make sure you're in very experienced hands and with people that that really know what they're doing with fillers. It's definitely not a casual thing where you get a group on and just show up somewhere and get your lower eyelids done. I, I just cannot caution you enough to be extremely cautious and, and do your due diligence and research and figuring out who you're going to let treat that area because it is um, it's difficult to get a good result because you have to be extremely precise um, and detail oriented. And then also there are safety concerns to make sure that you, you have a safe procedure no matter what. So um, we're pretty much up to 15 minutes. Um, we'll leave it there for today. We can save these next ones for um, next time. Again, we'll be doing this every Tuesday. We'll be here at 530. Um, I think I missed a week because of the ice storm or snowstorm that we had. And then one of my videos, I think number two or number three, did not save for some reason. Um, and so that one's unfortunately on the archive. Um, but we're basically doing it every week, um, getting the videos uploaded to the, um, to the TV series um, on the Instagram page. We're also uploading to other social media platforms like YouTube and things like that. And so um, all the archives will be there. They'll have descriptions of the videos, um, let you know what's in there. Um, and, uh, but you can count on us every week. And <clears throat> if you think of something uh, each week, usually we put up an Instagram story where you can punch it in and we'll get it that way. You can also email us. You can use our contact form on our webpage and just type in your question, say, hey, this is for this week's Q&A. Um, and we'll get it that way. Really, any way you want to contact us is fine. So, um, well, that's it for today, over and out. Uh, we will see you next week. I hope you're all are off to having a good start to your week. Um, the weather's been fantastic. A little crisp, a little cold, but but um, this is that, that sweet spot in Houston before summer kicks in. So hope, hopefully everyone's outside um, enjoying the good weather. All right, have a good week, everyone, and we will see you next week.